with this, we come to the next talk. As medical students, we felt as doctors when we started looking at chest x-rays. It was a thrill to look at an x-ray, especially in the midst of a busy ward. But as we grew older and wiser, we realized that reading x-rays is not such a simple thing. And it was very difficult to say an x-ray as normal. To, so, to throw more light on this, we have Dr. Jay Prakash. And to chair the session, I invite Dr. Unnikrishan, sir, consultant, physical medicine, Saraswati Hospital. Over to you, sir. Good morning to you all. Respected professors, some of my teachers are here and dear colleagues. We have an important talk now on x-rays, something very basic. And we have Dr. Jay Prakash, um, who was my senior at college. So Dr. Jay Prakash is the professor and head of uh, pulmonology at Toronto Medical College. Just he told me just now that he was transferred to Alabra. <laughs> so he's a consultant uh, pulmonologist uh, at SCT, and he's a fellow of American College of Chest Physicians, fellowships in uh, ILD from um, McMaster U University. And you can read all the uh, credentials there. <laughs> And uh, his area of interest is pulmonary radiology and airway disease. Welcome, Dr. J. Prakash. Good morning to all. Uh, respected chairperson and my close friend, uh, Dr. Nikitsnan, senior members of IMA. At the outset, I thank uh, the organizing committee of medicine, especially Dr. Pradeep Kadangur, for giving me an opportunity. And I feel it's a honor for me. Actually, Pradeep Kadangur sir asked me to show a few x-rays. He told me there's a conference coming, show some x-rays. But when the brochure came, it's like uh, fascinating x-rays. I don't know whether the images which I am going to show is, not, is, is going to fascinate you, but that images really fascinated me, and I learned a lot from that few x-rays which I am going to show you. This person is very familiar to you, no? I need not explain the features. There is, uh, there is a you know, spectacle, and I need not explain, because this picture is in our heart. X-ray should be like that. For that, you have to see more number of X-rays to become an expert in X-ray test. Who is this person? Ah, actually, it, it take, take few minutes to know, at least to recognize, and some of you are not recognizing, because this is the person who discovered and he got Nobel Prize for X-ray. We are not seeing his images regularly. That's why you are not recognizing him now. So importance, what I want to convey is, see a lot of x-rays, take a, each x-ray which you are getting in your practice and see correctly, then you will uh, you know, make a diagnosis. I'll start with, you know, the, when, the, when the introduction doctor was telling, you have to be expert to say the x-ray is normal. That's what he mentioned. This patient, 35-year-old male, presented to the ENT department with hoarseness of voice. All the investigation, including ENT people, please forgive me, Lot of, you know, all endoscopy were done, and it was normal, and patient is referred because he has a bit of cough. So when the patient came to my uh, OP, I saw this X-ray, and I added only one investigation, the diagnosis was there. Any clue? If you meticulously, I don't have a time to, you know, teach you how to read an X-ray, but if you look carefully, it looks absolutely normal, but can you see there is a small cavity lesion? small cavity lesion there, there, and I did the sputum for CBNAT. It was positive, and the patient was diagnosed as tuberculosis. It was only the tuberculous laryngitis by which the patient has hoarseness of voice, okay? Another 40-year-old male present to the emergency room with, with breathlessness and chest pain following a scoot accident or a fall from the scooter. This was the X-ray, which was declared normal, but the patient was breathless, so he was brought to the medical college, casualty. Any takers for this X-ray? Looks absolutely normal in the lung field, but if you look very carefully, systematically, you can see some soft, some air there, no? Like some soft tissue, no, lucency. See, I took a CT after clinical examination. There is an extensive pneumomediastinum, which is going to kill the patient in hours. 
So the patient was put on the ICU, managed correctly, and the patient survived. In the importance of seeing soft tissues, bony cage, the old teaching, soft tissue, bony cage, and lung fields. So this point is actually give the diagnosis. Now spend few minutes in the x-ray, then you will uh, get the diagnosis. So the learning point is, whenever you get a apparently looking normal x-ray, look into the you know, supraclavicular region, it's a hidden area. Look into the hilar region, again a hidden area. Look into the diaphragm and in the retrocardiac region. These are the areas where the lesions are hiding and misleading you. So called the sanctuary or the hidden areas in X-ray chest. So the learning point I learned is when you get a sex X-ray appears normal, look into the hidden regions before declaring it as normal. Okay. So this X-ray, both the patient present to the casualty with acute onset of breathlessness. This is, you all know, our undergraduate, a hyperlucency with no lung markings, collapsed lung border, pneumothorax. This X-ray is the one I want to convey some input to you. So there is a hyperlucency. You see the collapsed lung border, which is like a concave structure, concave structure. So this is the collapsed lung border. Here you are not seeing any collapsed lung border. So this is a tension bulla. And if you put a tube there, the patient will die unless there is a thoracic surgeon present. So before putting a chest tube, that is the treatment. This patient, if you don't put a tube, the patient may go for respiratory failure. Here, if you put a tube, the patient will collapse. So the difference is this collapsed lung border, this concavity. So this is a tension bulla. And the learning point is, whenever a pneumothorax is suspected in a patient with acute onset of breathlessness, you look, uh, think the possibility of a tension bulla before deciding a putting a tube. If a confusion, consult to your senior or a radiology colleague. And, uh, and this X-ray obviously looks like a COPD, and both there are hyperinflation. But if you look meticulously, even though it's hyperinflated, the left side is more loosened, more loosened than the right side. Is it so? Yes. So now this is the diagnosis. This gentleman has no pectoralis, no pectoralis on the left side, and all the muscles are thinned out there, and that gave the diagnosis of this hyperlucency other than COPD. What is it? There is a syndrome called Pollen syndrome. My our own patient from Katakada or something like that, and which taught me there is a condition called unilateral hyperlucency, which can be due to even muscle absence or uh, no, poor development, and that syndrome is actually uh, there is uh, uh, webbed fingers will be there, rib abnormality can be there. But the teaching point is when there is a unilateral hypersensitivity, have a clinical examination before deciding uh, the diagnosis. There are two x ray one is of uh, uh, Mrs. Shamala and the other one is of Ganesh. This x ray, the right breast is absent, but he has a breast on the right side. Is it so? But uh, the name, he actually came for a pre operative evaluation. He has a huge swelling on the right side, almost looking like a, whenever I show this x-ray in postgraduate examination, the first diagnosis, mastectomy left side. So then I will say, it's Ganesh. Then they will start laughing, they will change the diagnosis. So the, the teaching point I learned is, whenever you see a lung lesion like this, like this or like this, and when the outer border is, when the outer border is going, you know, outside the thoracic cavity, so this is a swelling or the abnormality. This is breast shadow. Both you can see the outer border is going outside the thoracic cavity. So when the uh, outer border of the lung lesion is going outside the thorax, it's an extrapulmonary lesion. It's not in the lung. That's why the breast shadow is going outside. So any lesion, the outer border is going outside the thoracic cavity. The lesion is extrapulmonary, not in the lung. That's the learning point. There is. These are my collection, which actually fascinated me. That's what I'm showing uh, this. Uh, this is actually a sign called a gloved finger appearance. You can see it's almost like, like looking like a gloved finger appearance, which is seen in asthma patients with allergy to fungus. Like uh, pollen allergen, when the patient has allergy to fungus, we call it as allergy bronchopulmonary aspergillosis. In that condition, you get the so-called X-ray sign of gloved finger appearance. So there are two X-ray, both the lung fields are apparently normal, but if you look carefully, you can see a shadow here, 
shadow here, and there is a shadow with a fluid level there. So whenever, these are, is again a hidden area, when the lung field looks normal, look into the retrocardiac area, and both this X-ray, here it's actually a uh, opacity or a shadow through shadow, and the fundal air shadow is absent here. But here, there is an opacity which is behind the heart, there is a fluid level, but the fundal air shadow is also present. No, that gives the diagnosis of, uh, I think a timer is coming. Can I close it? Yeah, yeah. correct. So the diagnosis is achalasia cardia, the other diagnosis is hiatus hernia, both are esophageal diseases. Because of this fundal layer shadow, you distinguish between achalasia cardia and hiatus hernia. So the learning point is, whenever you get a shadow behind the heart, think of an esophageal pathology. Rarely lung pathology can produce it, but uh, the most common causes are esophageal pathology like achalasia cardia or hiatus hernia. Ah, this is actually an extremely interesting case which I got. The left side, you see multiple calcified spots in the lung. What is the diagnosis? It's a post-chicken pox pneumonia. The patient had chicken pox in the childhood, still he has but a lot of calcifications. And this x-ray, any takers? This patient had a self-monitoring BP apparatus. And one day that BP apparatus, sorry, uh, uh, BP apparatus, the one day that mercury has broken and he has fallen into his face. He went to the wash basin and had a face wash and a bath. So the particle has actually aspirated the lung and this is actually Mercury poisoning, the patient had some respiratory distress and brought to the uh, 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 casualty, but uh, he survived and still the shadows are persisting. So this is a acute mercury poisoning and this is old chicken pox pneumonia. Both will produce calcifying shadows in the x-ray. These are multiple nodules and I think the diagnosis is very easy. The, these are multiple nodular shadows we call like, like uh, coin shadows. And this is almost like our cannonball appearance with coin shadows. And both uh, looks like the diagnosis can be metastasis. If you say this X-ray also has metastasis, I have to agree. But after investigation, this patient actually referred from uh, GH to us for a uh, confirmation, sorry, referred to RCC as metastasis. From RCC, they sent us for a tissue confirmation. And uh, I also initially thought this is going to be a metastasis and some of the large nodule is going to be a primary lung. But to my surprise, this came as an extremely rare diagnosis. Only seven or eight cases reported in the world literature. That's called a alveolar soft part sarcoma. It's a site of sarcoma in the lung, and that will present exactly like a metastasis. So whenever you get a meta metastasis, uh, this is an extremely rare, rare possibility. Very rarely you see this X-ray. And the learning point is pulmonary metastasis usually present with multiple nodules predominant in the lower zones. And these two X-ray shows hilar. These are the hilar regions of the X-ray. There are hilar swelling or hilar prominence or hilar mass on both sides, right side and left side, it is present. So when you get hilar prominence on both sides, which is almost symmetrical, the possibility is a sarcoidosis. So the, the X-ray when shows bilateral symmetrical hilar adenopathy, you have to consider the possibility of sarcoidosis. It's a very frequent disease in our part of the uh, world and the patient may present with uh, respiratory symptoms, red eye or even uh, skin rashes, uh, headache, etc., etc. So the typical is a bilateral hilar adenopathy. And uh, this X-ray is again a very interesting X-ray. Our own patient, he is actually a, 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 a person who is working in uh, in rock, uh, uh, no uh, shelling and uh, uh, no that sort of uh, work and the, he has multiple calcified nodules in the lung, and this is the interesting find on, unfortunately the pointer is not working properly. Okay. So he has, if you look carefully into the hilum, uh, you can see the hilar lymph nodes. Uh, you have a pointer here? So there is a hilum, you can see the nodes, the lymph nodes in the hilum are calcified and the calcification is a peculiar type of calcification. The outer border of the uh, lymph nodes are only calcified. So that's called an excel calcification, which is the diagnostic point of uh, silicosis. 
So that's also, again, silicotic diseases are actually not rare in our, uh, in our specialty. So this is, uh, both are called a pleural plaque. You are seeing lot of you know, calcified, dense calcified shadows. These rexes are now becoming rare because of our adequate early uh, you know, treatment of tuberculosis. These are actually old treated tuberculosis, including pleural involvement. That's called pleural plaques. And uh, 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 this X-ray is also a spotter. The first X-ray, you can see the left lower zone, there is an opacity here, which the typical calcification is called a popcorn calcification, and the diagnosis is a hematoma. So it's a spotter. When you get a popcorn type of calcification, the diagnosis is hematoma. But this, uh, the left X-ray, the, the other X-ray, there is an opacity in the hilar region, which is actually a mediastinal lesion. We also thought it could be a, no, no, uh, a media cell, uh, no, uh, uh, dermoid and all, but on FNAC or a biopsy, it turned out to be a media stainal hematoma. So both are hematoma, but the, the thing is, a media stainal hematoma is an extremely rare. There are only 12 cases reported in the world literature, only is our patient. So popcorn's calcification, again, uh, uh, it's a diagnosis of hematoma. No, I'm stopping. So I think I, I have a few more exercises, but I will stop uh, here because of the lack of time. And uh, the beauty of my presentation is I am not talking. I will uh, can stop at any point of time. Thank you very much. I do not want to take more time. Thank you, Dr. Jay Prakash. Very interesting collection of X-rays. Any comments or uh, questions to Dr. Jay Prakash? Actually, the management is a close monitoring with uh, respiratory and uh, cardiac support in the ICU. No specific treatment. Unless you don't recognize him on the patient, he can have a cardiac arrest. So. Ah, sir, endoscopy, the, they looked into the uh, DL scope into the vocal cords now. The vocal cords are moving normally. They thought the vocal cord palsy is the cause for hoarseness. The vocal cord was normally moving. That's why he referred to us. We had just did the sputum. Just to highlight the importance of an early lesion picking or a small lesion in a normally looking essay. That's my point, sir. Ah, it was normal. It was. That only conferred by the injured people. The vocal cords are moving normally. Tuberculosis can involve the larynx, sir. No? Tuberculosis larynx, where the sputum will be positive. The point is, the patient was not actually subject for a sputum examination, which actually every specialty people now can... Just think of tuberculosis, which is very prevalent in Kerala, I mean, in India now, till now. Thank you, sir. That indeed was a fascinating collage of images. I request uh, Titus, sir, to present a memento to Dr. Jay Prakash.